everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and today I am going to be doing a review of Pachinko by Ming Jin Lee. This is a really fascinating book and the reason why it's a really fascinating book is not only because of the content that the book covers, but it's also because it's a very divisive book. I, I asked a lot of people about what they thought about this book and even just some of the reviews that I watched. I would say it's pretty 50-50 split. I think some people either really love this book and some people really hate this book and they just don't enjoy it. So I was really curious about where I would land when I read this book. Overall, I have to say it was a very emotional experience. I think this is one of those books that will resonate with a certain type of person more just because of the themes that it's covering. And I'll talk more about that in a second. What is Pachinko about? Pachinko is a multi-generational story following a Korean family throughout their time in Japan. We follow the story at different points in time. I think we start out in like the 30s, we go into the 40s, up to the 60s, and then I think we even get up to like the 80s. So it's it's very, you know, kind of spread across a timeline. At the point that the book starts, there was a lot of racial tension between the Japanese and the Koreans with the latter being treated as second class citizens in Japan. There was a lot of racism, a lot of xenophobia, a lot of oppression, and it wasn't even like hidden. It was very much like a, an, an expected part of everyday life if you were a Korean in Japan. It's covering some very heavy stuff, like some very, very heavy stuff. This book isn't based on a true story, but it is based on the collective experience of Koreans that Ming Jin Lee actually interviewed. So even though like the main character isn't based on a real woman, her experience is echoed throughout the many people that Ming Jin Lee actually interviewed, which I think is really interesting. And I think made it feel very authentic as a result. There's quite a lot of things that I wanna talk about in regards to this book. So let's just jump in. What did I like? I really like the plot of this book. Like I'm not a particularly plot driven reader. I don't, I don't need tons of plot. And even then I wouldn't say there's tons of plot in this book. It's, it's very character driven and it's about these people and their experiences. But I think what it does a really good job of is showing the reality of what it was like being a Korean in Japan. When we're in Japan, in this book, we're mainly in Osaka and there was quite a large Korean population in Osaka around the time period that this book is set in. It doesn't hold back. It does paint a very harsh reality of what the day-to-day -day living was like as a Korean. And you'll either really like reading this or you won't. This brings me to a point that I heard quite a lot of times when I was watching reviews. I've heard a lot of people say that this book is boring and or is needlessly grim. And I have to say I disagree with that. And I think the reason why I disagree with that is because I come from a family of immigrants. I think if you come from a family of immigrants, this is a story that will deeply resonate with you. I think if you didn't, I don't think it will, just because your life experience is fundamentally different to people who have gone through the immigrant struggle. I did notice in the reviews that I read and the reviews that I watched that didn't like this book, they did tend to be from people who just don't have any experience in that realm of things. And that's okay, it's no hate against people. I'm just saying that that will impact your overall experience of it. I have heard many stories about my grandparents, my parents and the struggles that they had when they immigrated over to the UK and about how tough it was and about how, you know, my, as an example, my parents came over to the UK during a time when the right wing national front were very much a part of daily life. And it was scary. Like it was a really scary time for my mum as a teenager when she was growing up in North England. And so, when you hear those stories as a child and as an adult as well, and then you read a book like this, it's not that far fetched and it doesn't feel needlessly grim. It actually is a very accurate representation of what it feels like to be an immigrant in a country that doesn't necessarily value you as a human being. If you haven't read this book and you're watching this review, come into it with that mindset, come into it with the mindset that, oh, I can maybe potentially relate to this experience or, oh, this story isn't necessarily for me, or this this story doesn't necessarily res might not necessarily resonate with me because my life experience is so different. That's just kind of a, a disclaimer that I would say. The next thing that I really liked was the character work. I think the character work was absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna talk about a few characters briefly. Our main character, Sundra, is just the sweetest character ever. She's the focal point of the story. She is the person who connects 
all the other characters together, it all really starts with her. We follow her from a young age and she's a very bright, capable young woman. She gets embroiled with a very handsome Korean who has ties with Yakuza and unfortunately that's where everything kind of gets upended. She gets pregnant and that kicks off the whole saga. That's not a spoiler, it's literally written on the back of the book and it happens within the like first chapter or the first two chapters. This book is really about her struggle and her trying to survive and I think a lot of people, again, I, I think specifically a lot of immigrant women, I think Sunja's character will really resonate with them because she goes through so much and every day she gets put down and yet she'll always keep standing up to try. She'll always keep trying to do what she can to make it work. And it's just seeing her struggle was just so sad but also very uplifting when you do see her succeed in certain ways. She's a character that I deeply sympathise with. I think her resilience is something that I really uh, resonated with me personally for different reasons but I think if you're if you're somebody who has had a lot of hard knocks in life I think Sundra will be somebody that you relate to even though it might not necessarily be in the same context. The next character that I really liked was Isaac. So Isaac is a priest who marries Sundra to essentially help her out. He's a very honourable man who's very prone to illness and he's just the sweetest human being ever. And he's deeply religious, but he's also quite a rational person. Like he's one of those people that you could talk to religion about very rationally, which is the type of character that I really like. Uh, I'm not going to say more than that because I don't want to spoil anything by accident, but I think Isaac is, a, is the kind of moral centre of the book and uh, I think he's somebody that I kept in the back of my mind throughout the entirety of the book, regardless of whose POV I was reading, which I thought was really interesting. The next one is Ko Han Su, who's essentially the villain of the book, and he is the one who gets Sonja pregnant. And it's interesting with Ko Han Su because he's a very morally grey character. We find out that he had a lot of his own struggles. And the thing about Ko Han Su that I find really interesting is, is that he had a choice to make something of himself and the thing is by ma by making that choice to make something of himself he had to do questionable things but it lifted him out of poverty it lifted him out of the struggle that many other koreans have have to face day to day like sundra or isaac he's the sort of character that i don't like like i don't like him as a person but at the same time I can't always fault him for the decisions that he's made and that's what makes him such a compelling character to me. The last characters that I'm going to mention are Noah and Mozatsu, so they are the children of Sundra and then we also have Solomon who's the child of Mozatsu. So it's very very like we we get the, the the children of the children of the children. I just liked how we see the later generations having to live with the consequences made ultimately by Sundra. It's also a really fascinating study about how generational trauma gets passed down and how immigrant generational trauma gets passed down. Uh, I wouldn't say more than that because again I don't want to spoil anything but I just it's a fantastic insight into the weight that our parents had to, to kind of put up with and not just our parents our grandparents as well had to put up with so that we could be in a position to not only survive but also thrive in a world that wasn't always welcoming to us. And I, I, I talk about my own experience because a lot of it definitely resonates with me personally. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is the thematic work. So as I've mentioned, this is really a book about struggle, suffering, trauma, about how often many things are out of our control and we have to try to make the best out of a shit situation. And even then it might not turn out the way that we want it to. It is really about the immigrant struggle and how generational trauma can be felt for decades and there is this kind of question mark of whether you can ever really undo that generational trauma. The other thing that it definitely talks a lot about is the role of women and the role of the matriarch and how Korean culture, and I would say this is the same across m many Asian cultures in general, whether it's Southeast Asian or South Asian or whatever, but how Korean culture undervalues the role of the, the woman, how Korean culture, at least at, the, at that time, and to some extent still today, how the role of women is hugely undervalued and how women were treated, not even as second class citizens, but as third class citizens almost. Um, they're kind of right at the bottom of the totem pole. That was often 
presented through the male characters and I just I just thought it was such a fascinating insight into how the everyday woman had to put up with so much more shit than the everyday Korean man. Super fascinating, like really grim, like not not nice, but like a very raw, unfiltered look at it. And I think we need that sometimes. I gave this book a 3.75 stars. I, I would just round it up to a four. The reason why I didn't give it more than that is because I think the narrative felt a bit jointed at times. It definitely took me a bit out of the story. I also think the latter half of the book was weaker than the like first 60-70% of the book and I think it was just because Ming Jin Lee was trying to tell the story of the newer generations whilst also trying to do justice to the older generations but she wasn't really doing justice to both and uh, I think that was probably the weakest bit. I still enjoyed the ending, I think a lot of people really hated the ending. I didn't, I didn't hate it, I just think maybe the book could have been longer potentially or some of it could have been taken out and focused more on, on kind of one part over the other. This is the sort of book that like I, I finished this a few weeks back and I'm still thinking about it and I wouldn't be surprised if I read this book again because I just think it's one of these books that is a really good reminder of like how humans can be so awful to each other and to how to like have empathy for the situations that we're all fighting through every single day. So I did I did really enjoy it. It's just I think the writing is the thing that let it down the most. I did also watch the TV show uh, recently. As soon as I finished the book, I started watching the Pachinko TV show on Apple TV Plus and I really enjoyed it. I do want to just do a, a kind of quick summary of what I liked about the show. I think they really did stick to the source material. One thing I will note is, is that the, only the first half of the book is covered in the first season of the show. So as an example, Noah, Sunja's first son, isn't in the TV show at all in this season. I'm assuming he's going to come into season two because he, the little boy comes in a little bit at the end of the season, but we don't really get any insight to adult Noah. Or, um, so I'm really curious to see how that shapes up in season two. So we've only really covered, you know, a fraction of the book. The other thing about the show is, is that it, I would say it's a bit more hopeful than the book. I think the book is, I don't think there's much hope in the book, but the TV show, there are these moments of hope. There are these moments of people coming together. And uh, I think that made sense for the TV show. I, I think making the TV show exactly like the book wouldn't have been the best creative choice. Um, and I think it worked. The only thing I didn't like about the TV show is this, that they made changes to one of the characters. Uh, I'm not going to say which character, but they changed one of the key characters quite a bit. And I didn't, I didn't like that. I didn't like the choice and I don't know why they made that choice. So that's the only thing that I didn't enjoy. I have to say as well, I love the fact that they use Korean and Japanese actors. You're probably thinking, well, duh, obviously they would. It's a show about K Koreans and Japanese people. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. It's amazing how many shows are set in other countries and then they use white Americans and white British people to play these people. It's just jarring to me how anybody would ever think that's okay. But they actually use Korean actors and Japanese actors and the whole show is in Korean and Japanese. I have to give a shout out to three of the main actors, Kim Min-ha, Lee Min-ho and No Sang-hyun. They all did an amazing job. I have to say the whole cast did an amazing job, but those three in particular, whenever they were on screen, chef's kiss, absolute chef's kiss. So I do recommend watching the TV show if you didn't like the book, because I think the TV show is a slightly different take on it. And I think uh, if you haven't read the book, obviously go ahead and watch the TV show if you want to, but I think watching it after I read the book was better for me because I wanted to see what liberties they took and I thought it was just a really interesting comparison point into certain creative decisions that they made. I had a really good time with this book and I had a, as much as you can with a book that is as depressing as this, and I had a really good time with the TV show too and I'm really excited to watch season two when it comes out because it did get renewed recently. So yeah, that's my review. I did want to read a few quotes, so I will do that now. Uh, I did tab this book quite a lot. Okay. Here's the first one. You must be a diligent person with a humble heart. Have compassion for everyone, even your enemies. Do you understand that, Noah? Men may be unfair, but the Lord is fair. You'll see, you will. There are quite strong religious undertones in this book as well, which I thought was really interesting. 
People are rotten everywhere you go. They're no good. You want to see a very bad man? Make an ordinary man successful beyond his imagination. Let's see how good he is when he can do whatever he wants. That's such a good quote. Most people told you their thoughts and words and later confirmed them in actions. There were more people who told the truth than those who lied. Very few people lied well. What was most disappointing to him was when a person turned out to be no different than the next. He preferred clever women over dumb ones and hardworking women over lazy ones who knew only how to lie on their backs. Okay, here we go. Understand this. There's nothing worse than knowing that you're just like everybody else. What a messed up, lousy existence. And in this great country of Japan, the birthplace of all my fancy ancestors, everyone, everyone wants to be like everyone else. That's why it's such a safe place to live, but it's also a dinosaur village. It's extinct, pal. Carve up your peace and invest your spoils elsewhere. You're a young man and someone should tell you the truth about this country. Japan is not mm, because it lost the war or did bad things. Japan is mm, because there is no more war. And in peacetime, everyone actually wants to be mediocre and is terrified of being different. The other thing is that the elite Japanese want to be English and white. That's pathetic, delusional, and merits another discussion entirely. It's fascinating. One of the other themes that I didn't actually mention that comes up is that shame that immigrants feel when they are in a place that doesn't welcome them and that need to survive and that need to almost remove that sense of cultural identity that you come from. So as an example, one of the characters in this book is Korean and when he moves to Japan, he starts to lose his Koreanness and wants to be Japanese. And in a way, he almost abandons his Korean identity and he's almost ashamed of it. And I think that's just so sad. I think that's honestly one of the saddest things I've heard is somebody who's ashamed of where they've come from. And it's not his fault. It's because that's how he's been made to feel. That's the sad thing is, is the fact that he's been oppressed to the point that he can no longer embrace who he actually is like just think about that like, it's just so sad like if you really think about it, it's just one of the most depressing thoughts i've ever had in my head so i wanted to pay real attention to this book because it's such a fantastic book and i do think it gets a lot of unnecessary hate actually i i don't actually agree with a lot of people on the negative side i do think there is some work that needs to happen on the writing side but i think thematically and philosophically i think it's a really poignant beautiful book that is very depressing, but like I think it's very relevant to any point in history. So I definitely recommend it. Let me know if you've read it down below. Let me know what you think, where you kind of sit on the scale of loving it and hating it. And yeah, I'll see you down in the comments. Thanks for watching, folks. Stay safe. As always, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.